and welcome back to the Grind Podcast. If you've never seen my face before or watched an episode of the Grind Podcast before, hi, I'm Kav, I'm your host, and we are a platform dedicated to inspiring young Kenyans to get up, focus, and run towards their dreams. Because who said you're too young, though? We don't believe you're ever too young to achieve something that you put your mind to. So you'll be hearing from some of the most successful and youngest Kenyans doing it big right now, regardless of the time, regardless of the environment, regardless of the economy that we live in. They said, you know what, we've got talent, we've got dreams, and we're going to grind, baby. So we hope this inspires somebody out there hoping to change their lives. And welcome to the Grind Podcast. Our next guest has been singing for as long as she can remember since kindergarten. And this has been her passion for the longest time. She is a Kenyan artist, singer. She does many different genres. She released her first album last year titled put the title right here because I can't reveal who it is yet. Um, She is very talented, she's very driven, and she is rising to success quite quickly. Welcome to the Grind Podcast, Regara! introduction <laughs> i'm always like so excited to do it and then all my guests are like oh yeah that was so that good. was really nice thank you you're very welcome you deserve all the praise all the flowers thank you you're doing great in thank life. you hi um, hi guys <laughs> so before we start we always ask we don't go into profession mm-hmm. we start with how are you mentally psychologically and physically right mm. now <laughs> I can start with physically. <laughs> Currently, yeah. I have a broken bone, oh. but <laughs> how did that happen? Um the story. Yeah. I was jumping on a trampoline in January and somebody fell on my leg in the trampoline. Let me just tell you adults should not be on trampolines. <laughs> and now I know and you all should know. Adults should not be on trampolines <laughs> because now 2 months later my bone is still broken and like, I think we underestimate how long a bone takes to, to, to heal. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't think... When I saw it, yeah. I was like, okay, maybe she just fractured her, like, ankle or something <laughs> like that. But then, and then you came today, and I was yeah. like, it's still, it's still broken. broken. It's still healing. Oh, wow, guys. Maybe we should focus on science. Yeah. Tell us. We should listen. Yeah. We really be don't. careful. Be yeah, careful. be careful, guys. Adults shouldn't be on trampolines. Guys. Yes. <laughs> we shouldn't. Rule of thumb. <laughs> <laughs> so how, how are you other than that? Other than that, I'm fine. Mentally, I'm okay. Yes. Um, obviously, I think when you get an injury like it kind of puts you in a funk Mm -hmm. so for the last few months I wasn't in the best place but I feel like I'm finally starting to just like come out of that and break free of that so mentally I'm really okay and I'm so thankful and I'm so happy about that so blessed yeah we don't always get that yeah Um, yeah Mm -hmm. we really do struggle with mental health yeah we like to talk about mental health in our podcast have you ever suffered through anything like have you ever gone through depression? Do you have anxiety? Because I feel like when people see artists, they really see them on the stage and like, of course glorify them, but they don't know what's happening in yeah. the background. Yeah. Um, how is that for you? How How has your journey with mental health been? Uh, with mental, mental health. <laughs> <laughs> with mental health, um, I have serious anxiety. So... It's just been a thing that I've lived with, like, for the longest time, like, yeah. from the beginning of, like, from however far I could remember. And yeah. at first, I don't know, I thought that maybe there was something wrong with me because I would get really anxious very quickly. I would panic for, the like, the smallest things. Yeah. Like, I was a very anxious child, and that made me very quiet. Yeah. And I don't know, I feel like the older I got and the more people started talking about mental health and anxiety and depression and everything, the more I understood, like, exactly, like, why I was feeling that way and yeah. that it's normal at the end of the day. It is. Yeah, it's like, I don't know, I'm not technically, like, better. Like, I have my ups and my downs. Yeah. I have um, episodes, panic attacks, um, all of that stuff. Yeah. But, I mean, it's just, I guess it's just me. Yeah. <laughs> so what can I do about yeah. it? 
<laughs> yeah, and I try to just like there there are a lot of affirmations that I tell myself, especially like when I'm feeling when when I'm feeling really really overwhelmed. Yeah. I just reassure myself like right now in this moment like I'm okay. Yeah. There's no need to worry. Yeah. I'll just sit in my room and I'll be like right now in this moment you're fine. Yeah. You're okay. You're still here. Exactly. You're still breathing and living. Exactly. The moment will pass. Exactly. Like, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I had a panic attack not so long ago. Yeah. <laughs> I mean like an hour ago before I filmed this episode. I was like, so many things are overwhelming me right yeah, now. Yeah. I had a panic attack. I yeah. talked to my mom. Uh-huh. Are we here? Yeah, exactly. See, exactly. It was a moment of panic. Exactly. And it's nice to have someone that you can talk to. Yeah. It's nice to have that person that you can call and that will just be there to at least ground ground you. Yeah. Especially if they're seeing it from like the outside in, they'll be like, "Okay, so exactly like when did you start feeling like this?" Yeah. And they'll be able to like bring you back to reality. Exactly. Like, "Don't worry. Honestly, don't worry oh, about good. it." Exactly. People exactly. Good. Who is your yeah. person? Cuz I know see your friend there. Yeah. Hey, friend. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Who is your person and Mm -hmm. how did that person become that person for you? Because I went through therapy Mm -hmm. um, not so long ago Mm because of some stuff that I needed to deal with. By the way, guys, go to therapy. It's worth it. Mm -hmm. Um, And one thing she always used to tell me and reassure me is that, okay, um, you have friends for different things in life. Mm. Of course, there's the seasonal, the regional friends, and then there's the lifetime friends. But actually, if you think about it, there's... People you go to when you're going through mental health problems. Mm-hmm. People you can talk to when you need advice for mm-hmm. something. There are other people who are there just for fun. Mm-hmm. Like, how did you pick out the person who would be this person? And who maybe... You can even shout them out, you know? Yeah. Um, who is this person for you? Right now, honestly, I have a lot of people yeah. <laughs> for this. Um, Definitely, like, the biggest person is my mom. Yeah because Go yeah because <laughs> she usually like she she brings me back in a very tough way but in yeah. a way that i need to be brought back yeah like she won't feed into my anxiety she'll just be like Rugoro, what like, <laughs> why are you stressed out stop come on, just calm down uh-huh. breathe in breathe out everything will be fine yeah. so she has that tough love aspect um i have my boyfriend who i call like anytime you know like i'm grateful for him because i can call him like over like the smallest inconveniences that i can't call my mom over even she'll just be like what the hell (laughs) i'm busy yeah Yeah, so i can just be like oh my god can you imagine this and this and this and this and this happen and i'm really grateful because he's there at least to listen listen. and be there for me so currently like he's the person that i'll like actually call like over anything and everything yeah I have Lisa, who I can literally just, like, go to her house every single freaking day. <laughs> Shut yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> so she helps me, like, at least get out and, like, be around people. Even if we're not really doing much, yeah. I just need to be around somebody. somebody yeah. Or she needs to be around somebody. At yeah. least we're there for each other. Mm. I have my oldest friend, Mokami, who I love so much. And hey, she understands. Hey, yeah. Mokami. Yeah. How you doing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I he love. Always, like, yeah, a dynamic duo. yeah always. always from yeah. the beginning. Yeah, and we understand each other. The mm-hmm. thing is that we we are so much alike. It's insane. Yeah, it is so insane how much we are alike. I so love we when understand people find those people. Yeah, yeah. So we understand like like our boundaries. We've never crossed each other's boundaries, which is wow. so amazing. That's so rare. So rare. It's because we're so much alike. Whatever she won't like, I won't like. Yeah, and vice versa. Yeah. And even with like anxiety and depression and everything, like it's we're there for each other because we understand. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. Guys, friendships are so important. I say this in every podcast because yeah. everyone talks about friendships and yeah. connections, and yeah. it's so important. So I wanted to dive a bit more into family because you talked about how your mom is one of those people that you go to when you're going through something, mm-hmm. and I think it's very important to have a mom figure, especially to be that type of person because a lot of people don't have a good relationship with their parents especially when you're so similar it can be hard now you are an artist and you're a person as well Mm -hmm. um what is it how do you nurture your relationship with your mom and your dad and just like your family how is family life for you that's what i want to ask family life it's it's pretty okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm really grateful to have my family or the family that I have. Yeah. They support me. They love me. Yeah. 
and I can see that they love me like they it's not that they just tell me like oh we love you blah 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 the things that they do for me and the way that they help me and for example yeah. the way I can rely on my mom yeah. whenever I'm feeling low I could rely I could <laughs> can rely on my dad as well yeah. and they really 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 support me especially in what I do and it's really difficult because I know that there are a lot of musicians and a lot of artists that mm-hmm. don't get the support that they need from their family because of the career that they've chosen yeah and I feel like I'm really lucky because not only do they support my career choice like you know it's one thing to just be like you know what yeah you just do you yeah and it's one another thing to just be like have you done this have you recorded this have you oh, done that have you done this photo shoot? have you done exactly like oh. following up and making sure that I keep on going, going and I keep on pushing yeah yeah so I'm really grateful for that oh. so yeah love your family <laughs> I'm so happy for you in that aspect. What was it like actually starting music? Because as you said, not a lot of people Mm -hmm. get the support that they need from their family. A lot of people are just left to the dogs. Is that a phrase or did I just make that up? That's a phrase. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know where that came from. But a lot of people don't have that support. What was it like for you to decide that you actually want to start this professionally? It was... Okay, for me personally, I felt like... Okay, before I decided to to start music professionally, yeah. I had just like put it at the back like, okay, I'll just sing sometimes. Yeah. Like it's just going to be a hobby. Yeah. Um maybe I'll do like some performances from my family and yeah. leave it at that. Yeah. Cuz I had reached a point where I had just started uni and I felt like I wanted to get out and get like a real quote-unquote real job Mm -hmm. you know yeah Yeah, I was really demotivated and I don't know I I just reached a point in my life where I feel like I was really in the dark but I didn't know that I was in the dark yeah so when I finally started like to consider doing music professionally like seriously Mm -hmm. it's like my world just lit up again And I was like, damn, what well, is that? You know you're in your passion, you know? That's how <laughs> yeah. you know you're doing something yeah. that you love. Yeah, because I was just like, damn, mm-hmm. that was weird. But anyway, <laughs> like let's move on. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I love that. What do your parents say? My parents have always known. Like, there wasn't even a conversation that needed to be had, honestly. Because wow. mm-hmm. I've been singing since I was a kid. Like, I've been in, um, uh, what, what are they called? Musicals. I've been in choirs. I've been yeah. in all of that stuff. I feel you, girl. Yeah. <laughs> so you. when I decided to like, I just told them like, oh, I'm going to the studio. And they were like, oh, okay. And then it just continued like that. <laughs> and just moved on. Yeah. Like nothing, like nothing happened. Yeah, I didn't need to sit them down and be like, so. Because they already knew it. It didn't need to be spoken yeah. about. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. I like that. Mm-hmm. I love that they're so supportive. <laughs> yeah. And to be you for example Mm -hmm. who has found their passion and had that enlightened moment is such a blessing Mm. and thank you for coming on the podcast by the way thank you because it's lovely to hear from young people Uh you're 22 yeah 22 (laughs) guys 22 22 (laughs) we love young people who are chasing after their dreams and are still motivated one thing is how do you stay motivated because you will have creative blocks. You will have moments where you're doubting yourself when yeah. things aren't picking up yeah. as fast as you want them to pick up. Yeah. Um, when you fail at something, mm. it's always easy to like be down and just accept it yeah. for what it is. Yeah. What keeps you motivated to create, make, continue creating music? I feel like that's it's something that I've I'm still learning. Yeah. Because I have my moments like. If you asked me like a month ago, yeah, what's my plan for the year? I'd have been like, I don't know. <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't was know. With the flow. Yeah, I had no plan. I had no motivation. I was so down. Yeah. But now, like, I have plans every week. I already know what I'm gonna do for the next three weeks, wow. for the next six months, for the next seven months. Yeah. Because I was able to just like tell myself, like, listen, like, I don't know. Right now, what I'm doing, what's yeah. working, is yeah. just telling myself, like 
the world is moving yeah with or without you <laughs> whether yeah whether you like it or not the world is gonna move you might as well move with it exactly yeah that's what like got me out of the current funk mm-hmm. i know that there's gonna be a funk that's gonna come up yeah. again i'm gonna feel like i don't want to sing anymore I, I i won't be able to write anymore you know it just i don't know maybe the, the next time that happens i'll have another method of getting yeah, out of exactly. it exactly yeah but for now i'm just telling myself like move just continue moving because grow and grow yeah but at the same time what i've begun to understand mm-hmm. is when i'm tired i need to rest yeah because sometimes it's not even like a creative block it's a burnout yeah. and i really just need to rest for yeah. like a few days or a week or two weeks or something mm-hmm. i just need to take some time for myself mm-hmm. so yeah that's what i do as well like when i feel like i'm tired yeah when i feel like i just i can't like physically i wake up and i'm just like uh-uh yeah no no no. not today no <laughs> not, not today devil exactly. no <laughs> yeah i'll just listen to my body and i'll be like okay i'll just rest. you need some time to yeah rest. yeah oh my gosh that's so key for you to have learned that at this age mm-hmm. i feel like what people do nowadays is just go as hard as they can yeah. physically yeah and emotionally psychologically yeah. go as hard as they can yeah and then they burn out exactly i was watching um uh, you not a youtuber she's a lady on instagram she makes content she's american mm. um but she has she's moved to kenya mm. she does a lot of different content but mm-hmm. she was in hospital because mm. she burnt out that's how bad it I got i saw that yeah did you see the yeah, same the lady yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, i saw we that yeah. the same thing yeah. <laughs> and she literally you end up yeah. in hospital yeah. or you get so low to the point where you don't even want to pick yourself back mm, up again. Exactly. And burning out is probably the worst thing that you could do for yourself. Yeah. Because now you're mentally, physically, you're incapacitated mm-hmm. basically. You're mm-hmm. just there. Exactly. But exactly. for you to listen to your body mm-hmm. and be like, you know what? It's time. Yeah. To rest, baby. Mm-hmm. It's time to rest. That is a skill that these people are about to learn. Yeah. Because they need to learn. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so good for you on mm. that. Thank um, you. I really appreciate. It. Come on, guys. Spread the word. Yeah. Rest. Spread the word. <laughs> okay, now going into music a bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to maybe know what it's like to be a solo artist. Mm-hmm. Because I do know you are in a group, which I feel like not a lot of people know that. Yeah. With Kan Kanzu? Yeah. And Oma. Yeah called Tam- Tamian? It was Tamian. Tamian. And it was also, I was also with them when they were Chief Gang. So... What? I didn't even know that. Yeah. She's actually the one who told me. Really? <laughs> yeah. Hey, Gally. Yeah. Behind the camera. <laughs> She's actually the one who was like, yo, with you the know the group? Before. Yeah. I was like... I didn't know that. Yeah. So, okay, you went from... How was your experience? Let's start with, how was your experience being in a group? Mm-hmm. And what... How did you end up there? Um, with the group. Yes. Okay. So we were in school together. Okay. And we had just broken for a holiday. Yeah. And we realized, okay, I sing. Yeah. Uh, Kanzu is multi-talented. I be seeing him Yeah. <laughs> he produces, he raps, he sings, he writes, everything. Everything. Yeah. So, and, and um, Oma raps. Yeah. So we decided, okay, let's meet up uh-huh. and just vibe. We're 16 at this time, yeah. 16? Yeah, we're 16. What? Yeah, so we're just like, ah, oh, let's just meet up and vibe. Mm-hmm. So we, we, we chilled with um, Andrew at his place while he was making beats and yeah. almost freestyling. And I was freestyling and we were just like, dude, like we have some serious chemistry. Yeah. Something should go on. Uh-huh. You know? So <laughs> we just like, we decided to just become a group. Yeah. Tamian. So Tamian stands for Tanya. Oh God, I'm gonna bring out their their government names. <laughs> yes, expose. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it stands for Tanya, Michael, and Andrew. Okay. So Tammy Ann. Oh. Yeah, and we made a few songs here and there, but we never released anything. Yeah. By the time they started releasing, because we decided to change our name to Chief, mm-hmm. which then changed to Chief Gang. Yeah. And by the time they were like getting ready to release music, I yeah. just felt like. I, I didn't want to be a part of the group, the group anymore. anymore. Uh-huh. Not because I hated them or we had any bad blood or anything. Yeah. I just don't think I work well in with a group. A group. Yeah. yeah, I felt... I don't like being controlled and... I don't... 
like I feel that. yeah i don't like being in a situation where everything needs to be agreed upon between us three i want to yeah. decide what i want to do when i want to do it exactly. and how i want to do it Girl, yes. exactly so i just realized i don't think this is for me we mm-hmm. continued being friends obviously but i just decided to like just do my you own thing you went your separate way exactly so they became chief gang and you became rock yeah <laughs> <laughs> the solo artist yeah. <laughs> okay so now what was how was it transitioning because i know it can be difficult Mm -hmm. going off on your own it's not that you necessarily had released any music but there was already that relationship that connection that chemistry that you had built yeah what was it like branching off and then realizing that you're doing this on your own Mm -hmm. now Mm -hmm. um what was that process like what did you struggle with Mm. what did you find you succeeded in yeah i feel like it was really it was really easy at that time okay. because it wasn't like I left Chief Chief Gang yeah. to just like to to nothing yeah. or I just left and I was just like oh my god there's this big white white like whole wide world yeah I'm just alone yeah at the time that I left I had actually created like um a, a, like a circle of producers and um, rappers and like people just in music yeah. So I already had like a producer that I started working with Mm -hmm. and um, a studio that I would go to like regularly and they were really supportive and we would just like work with each other and like grow and everything because I think during that period I really grew a lot. Yeah. Okay, I have grown more in the past year, but like I grew enough. Yeah, that I needed you, to. Yeah, you know, well, give yourself your flowers. Yeah, girl, you grew. <laughs> yeah, I grew. Godless. Like, yeah, because like we were constantly in the studio, and as much as like majority of the songs that we made at that time haven't been released. Yeah, it was so vital because it helped me write yeah. and sing yeah. and understand exactly what I want to sing and what I want to make and. Gosh, if you listen to the first song I made when I was there and the <laughs> yeah. last, like, you'd, you'd literally, like, there's such a big gap and I'm really happy for that. So it wasn't really that bad. Yeah. Because I had those people with yeah. me. And la- now, like, when it came to, like, leaving them and now going to, like, a better place. Yeah. Um, I just, it just, like, same transitioned thing. Transitioned well. Yeah, it transitioned well. Oh, like, what? just different transitions when they needed to happen. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. It's, mm-hmm. a, it's a growth story. Yeah. You got something there. Mm-hmm. Even though you didn't release the music, yeah. it needed to happen. Exactly. Needed some experience in the studio. Yeah. I know when it came to me and trying to start singing professionally. Which, um, <laughs> no, but you have such a beautiful voice. Girl. I usually see your, your covers on Instagram. <gasps> I'm being exposed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm exposing everybody today. <laughs> Who's next? <laughs> come on <laughs> um, but like I know for me it's my mom had booked me a studio uh-huh. a studio session and mm-hmm. I was so inexperienced at the time mm-hmm. not inexperienced when it came to singing uh-huh. I've been doing what you've been doing in uh-huh. terms of I used to sing mm-hmm. every musical I was in uh-huh. I was in it uh-huh. and I was singing I was belting at like mm-hmm. five years old I was screaming my head off wow. like I had a voice uh-huh. like um, so I did I did go through, and mm. that's why I can relate to you so much, because I did go through that. Mm. But in the beginning, what you did that was better than what I did was that you still went ahead and did it. Mm-hmm. For me, I was crippled with fear, mm-hmm. and I felt like I was in that space where I'm not ready. Mm. And my mom keeps reminding me, she's like, girl, like I booked your studio like four or five years ago. Uh-huh. Why didn't you do it? And uh-huh. I'm like, mom, I wasn't ready. Oh. But like looking back at it, I mm-hmm. was like, I could have I could have not been ready yeah. and it would have been fine. Exactly. I could be Rogora right now, guys. <laughs> like, I could be killing it in, yeah. in the Kenyan music industry right now. But uh-huh. it's just the way my path went. Yeah. And mm-hmm. it's just a lesson that you should take every opportunity yes. that you have and take yes. it with so much vim regardless. I, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like also... We need to understand that sometimes we could be our own worst enemies. Yes. Yeah, maybe at that time you felt like you weren't ready, but it's yeah. because like you were judging, you were prejudging yourself yeah. already. Because I used to go through that a lot. Yeah. But I feel like even if you feel like you're not good at it, even though you you, you really are. <laughs> <laughs> Just, what is it with me and yeah. egging for compliments? I guess. <laughs> no, you are. <laughs> so even if you feel like you're not good at it, just start. Just start you'll grow like the only way you can go is up 
that's it right from where you are you just get better it's just the surface exactly. you're scraping girl. exactly you can't get worse and you're already great you'll just get greater <laughs> you know what i'm gonna listen to you yeah. guys i need to listen to all my guests as they speak because you guys really teach us something like oh, wow it's it's eye-opening my mom and i were having a conversation the other day and she mm-hmm. was like i was like mom she said like, oh i've watched all your episodes by the way i'm mm-hmm. like what <laughs> like they're young people like why are you yeah. watching her she's like oh my god i can learn things mm. i've got my notebook out and i'm like oh I'm like wow. that is so cute oh like, wow <laughs> hi kavisa's mom <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, we love you. <laughs> last episode i was talking about my dad now it's time for you yeah. <laughs> but it's like um it's just that i forgot what i was saying <laughs> i completely forgot next question <laughs> okay mm-hmm. so now we've talked about um how you went from a group to being a solo artist yeah now how was it when you now signed to your new record label mm. because i know as a solo artist you have to do everything yourself mm-hmm. and by the way i'm hearing this because i remember what you said in an interview by the way guys yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but i know as a solo artist you do everything yourself yeah but when you merge into a a record label mm-hmm. there's a lot of things that come with it yeah what was your process of one starting to find a record label that aligned with your values and mm, your goals mm. um and then I'll ask the second one after yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't a, a long process yeah. because i think i had ex- established <laughs> i had ex- i had established <laughs> boundaries <laughs> with the label that i'm signed to they yeah. already know that there's certain things i cannot and i will not do yeah so at least we had that figured out before i even signed yeah um yeah so it wasn't really that hard cuz i think once we understood or once they understood my boundaries mm-hmm. and what i wanted to do and everything we reached a point where like okay we can work now together now we can do it it's not like i was going there and they were telling me okay strip naked <laughs> sing gangaton <laughs> and continue for the rest of your life <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay wow well. yeah uh-huh. yeah so it was nice yeah. <laughs> are there any challenges that you've had with them so far or has it been like smooth sailing mm-hmm. um just on point every single time or are there things like like songs weren't released on time or mm. stuff like that I think with every relationship like there're always challenges yes so mm-hmm. this is like this it does not exempt like the relationship that I have with my label yeah there are always places where we have a lot of friction Yeah. where we don't decide on the same things and yeah. it goes back to like me like telling you I'm not the type of person that likes to be told what to what do, to do. <laughs> so it creates a lot of issues sometimes because you know I I, I start to get really protective over myself like, yeah. this is my career this is my life this yeah. is none yeah but i guess it's just been to understand that at the end of the day mm-hmm. these guys have my best interest at heart and sometimes we won't agree with each other yeah it's nice that we find like a middle ground yeah and also to understand that i signed an agreement with them like yeah. we have an agreement and as much as it's my career it's their career too and yeah. i have to understand that yeah so yeah it's it's not bad it's not smooth sailing obviously like mm-hmm. any other thing that you're doing yeah. in life but it's not horrible it's not yeah. like i'm having the worst time yeah. um it's just like a relationship really you have to build it yeah it, there are ups and downs ups and downs exactly. baby ups and downs exactly yeah and it's always that as you were saying because you were saying how um you can find a middle ground and you have to realize a couple of things mm-hmm. but it's also that as i feel like you're so similar to me in mm-hmm. so many aspects because i hate being controlled and yeah. that's why i fought <laughs> with everybody in my life was trying to control me <laughs> like i fought i get it. that <laughs> but it's also like what as young people we don't realize and this comes with our parents too is mm-hmm. that there's people who have more experience than you do yes and they have lessons that they can teach you mm-hmm. just kind of regardless of who you are because it's right to control your life because it's mm-hmm. your career mm-hmm. um i mean with ivy park and beyonce terminating their agreement with Ad- adidas adidas yeah. um yeah. because they had creative differences yeah. yes that's her step of like yes i'm going uh-huh. to control that's my brand. Yeah. So for you that's your career but it's always like 
sometimes you have to sit down and be like damn like mm. i don't know everything exactly like, exactly <laughs> i actually don't exactly yeah. yeah so especially with these people like they've been in the music industry for time and yeah. there's definitely a lot that i've learned from them and a lot that i've had to just be like okay you're right I'm yeah wrong. Yeah. But there are also times when I've stood my ground and I've been like, uh uh-uh. uh. No. Yeah. I don't agree. Exactly. Mm. It's like a two way street, street of compromise. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I've learned a lot from them and I'm still learning a lot from them. So. Yeah. Yeah. You want to mm-hmm. shout out the record label? Can you say who the record label is? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think I can. Yeah. <laughs> Unless I'm called next week, like, excuse me, Rokoro. <laughs> Why am I hearing yeah. this? Or it's this? like voice changing. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> 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 so shout, funny. shout out to Taurus Music. <laughs> who are they, really? Could you just give like a brief description? Yeah, they are a Pan African label based in Africa. Africa, obviously yeah <laughs> east africa west africa south africa they they're kind of like um they 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 exco- okay. <laughs> excover explore habit. <laughs> <laughs> if, if like if you want to know anything about me it's me in english are you kikuyu i am yeah that's it, that's it. <laughs> that is where it comes from yeah. oddly enough even if you don't speak kikuyu if you have kikuyu blood uh, yeah it's gonna happen yeah <laughs> regardless they, they, exco- they, they discover <laughs> yeah um up and coming talents yeah. and they nurture their talent and they help you grow to a certain level yeah and they then they let you go and then let, let you fly, fly. <laughs> they let you fly like away a butterfly. <laughs> after teaching you a lot of things <laughs> and taking you to a certain level that they feel you're ready to just like take over wow. the industry and everything that's so inspiring maybe yeah. i should start a record label like that yeah sorry Tori, i'm coming <laughs> for your neck are you ready for cab <laughs> I, <laughs> this call is coming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, hey. <laughs> but, but I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. But that's nice. I'm glad yeah. you found a record label that that is there for you and yeah. is nurturing you. Yeah. yeah. Because you know the Britney Spears scandals and mm. the mm-hmm. and all those people that there are some terrible people out there. Yeah. But um Maybe you can tell me what boundaries you said you were going to set with them. Maybe mm-hmm. for an upcoming artist who wants to start going into a record label. Mm. What things that you definitely said, you know what, I'm not doing this. Mm. You better respect this. Mm. Or we're not working together. Mm. Mm-hmm. I think maybe it's okay. I'm the type of person that's like, I'm very body positive. But mm. I don't technically like to shoot with my body yeah, yeah so one thing i think they understand is that i don't like to i, I like to like be not modest obviously yeah. i like to show some skin a lot of skin yeah but there's certain things i can't do, do i can't yeah. wear there's certain things i can't sing about that mm-hmm. they would want me to sing about yeah um there's a point in time where they wanted me to um they because we live in kenya yeah swahili is predominantly spoken yeah they wanted me to tap into that market by singing a lot of swahili yeah um i didn't incorporate a lot of english into my words into my songs yeah. and i i felt like i it just wasn't me yeah i i won't sound like me yeah it won't sound relatable because it won't be original it won't be yeah. natural mm-hmm so at least i told them that yeah yeah i think that's what i can think about from the top of my head yeah yeah oh mm-hmm. wow mm-hmm. i like that mm-hmm. okay i'm glad you have those boundaries yeah. actually speaking on uh, this was actually a question i had in mind mm-hmm. and i really maybe you can dive in a bit more about it. it's about the swahili mm-hmm. is it other than with the record label mm-hmm. being a kenyan artist mm-hmm. do you ever feel pressured to have to sing in swahili to make it or like oh, yeah definitely a hundred percent all the time yeah because i mean can you like a lot of kenyans speak swahili and yeah. a lot of people relate to swahili and i feel really nice at least that nowadays i'm incorporating a lot of swahili into my songs yeah as much as it's like maybe half swahili half english here yeah but i feel a lot of pressure to sing so, in swahili yeah and i haven't really talked about this a lot but Mm -hmm. when i release songs and i go on media media tours and everything i always like kind of dread going to the like swahili swahili stations yeah Yeah. because i don't feel like i'll be able to really relate to the people listening yeah 
so i don't know it's it's something i struggle with all the time because i speak english a lot like yeah. i just speak english like it's yeah. my first language you yeah. know how we grew up <laughs> exactly i'll speak swahili when i have to and i'm speaking to someone that just doesn't know english and i'll yeah. be fine with that and if someone speaks to me in swahili i'll be like oh perfect like like that's okay yeah if i go for an interview and the interviewer is speaking swahili well and good but i just feel like i don't relate to the people to, yeah yeah and it's 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 a, a serious fear honestly wow. yeah that's so crazy because mm-hmm. <coughs> i have an experience like that. i'm telling mm-hmm. you what's so similar mm-hmm. because when we started the podcast mm-hmm. i was like okay i want to get some big names like mm-hmm. butros and mm-hmm. and those big names but mm-hmm. i'm like oh my god i'm gonna sit with them mm-hmm. they're gonna speak to me in sheng and i'm gonna yeah be like, huh? <laughs> yeah like, <laughs> be like uh-huh yeah. Um, yeah so i ended up just kind of limiting myself to english speaking mm. people yeah but also i don't blame myself mm-hmm. actually i kind of do but i also mm-hmm. don't mm-hmm. because i mean i never grew up like being mm-hmm. taught yeah swahili same yeah like we went to british system schools yeah. you know we were birthed in the british curriculum exactly like i just knew english until like recently until i was 17 actually i did not speak swahili at all i just started learning when i was 17 which is so wild by the way no but that's so good mm-hmm. you 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 chose to learn swahili yeah guys i'm not gonna embarrass myself <laughs> okay. i'm so bad at speaking swahili uh-huh. i can fully understand it okay don't go shang because yeah. i can't do shang yeah i'll just be like like blink blink <laughs> you know then sound effects like yeah. Huh? yeah yeah but like i can understand but i'm if i'm put like pressured into doing it mm-hmm. for example i can do it when it comes to like oh i have to speak to a border where yeah. i am yeah. or like a delivery guy yeah. or something like that yeah. that i can do yeah but now you come and tell me can i speak to healy now blank oh, same no, no. same my yeah. mind will go blank i'll be like um what I end up feeling like an idiot. But you know what? It's fine. Yeah. It's not our fault. Exactly. I think I've also just like, I've been trying to just like understand. Like it's the way I am at yeah. the end of the day. Exactly. I can't really control it. Yeah. I can't control the fact that I didn't speak Swahili growing up. Yeah. The fact that I probably will never really like have a full, like really good Swahili song. Yeah. And I won't be able to interact with people as well mm-hmm. as I could. Yeah. In Swahili. Yeah. I don't know it's just something that you just learn to accept. Yeah. Yeah. But it's okay. Yeah. It's okay mm-hmm. because you will still have those people who love you and support you yeah. and you grow exactly. regardless of mm-hmm. the Swahili speaking. Exactly. It's just a bit sad that Kenyans require mm-hmm. that for you to like blow up real big but there's exactly. also people like you and mm-hmm. Karun and mm-hmm. Zinia Manase mm-hmm. who said okay you know what It's fine. We're yeah. still going to create music because we are talented. Yeah. We don't have to feel the pressure. S- 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 I? I'm a snack. <laughs> I get that. <laughs> I'm singing in Swahili, yeah. like full Swahili songs. Yeah, yeah. But you guys are talented regardless. And mm-hmm. and you're still going. Exactly. You're still and going. Yeah. And I know like there are situations where like some people can be really judgmental. Um, yeah. when i don't speak swahili or when they meet me they'll be like you know what people don't understand is like even when i'm singing in swahili singing in swahili is so much different than speaking in swahili because when yeah. i sing in swahili i can control exactly how i sound yeah. and what i say yeah i have like a hundred takes if yeah. i want i can make sure it's perfect yeah. when someone approaches me and is just <laughs> like hey yo sasa uko fit i'm yeah. just there like ah <laughs> I yeah, so they'll assume. But like, I've had so much time, and you know, when you're singing, there's no accent. Yeah, you just, just sing. sing. Yeah, yeah I just sing. Exactly. I find it so shocking sometimes. And I was actually watching um, X Factor, one of those, mm. and this girl, she's got like the most high pitched voice I've ever heard. Mm. She sings, and she's like on an alto, mm. like tenor. And yeah. I'm like, whoa, it's so different. But right? singing is completely different than talking, by the yeah. way. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. I like that. Mm-hmm. Um I wanted to go into do you have any advice you would give somebody who wants to branch off as a solo artist or even just start mm. creating music professionally? Mm. From your experience of doing it, what would you what advice would you give them? Listen up guys. <laughs> I think the only 
thing I could tell somebody who's thinking of starting mm-hmm. or branching into a solo career yeah. is to just start. Like sometimes you might feel like you you're not going to go anywhere. You don't know musicians, you don't know other musicians, you don't know producers, you don't know um anybody yeah. doing music or in the music industry or anything. Yeah. I feel like once you just take that step, mm-hmm. even if it's like a YouTube video yeah. or a TikTok or just something just of you something. singing, yeah. you keep <laughs> making these connections. You start knowing these people. Like yeah. a producer might reach out to you like, hey, I just heard your voice. Would you like to come by my studio? All of that stuff. All yeah. of these paths will just start to create themselves and you'll find yourself just climbing them yeah. until you reach a point where you're just like, you know, you've situated yourself. Like, yeah. okay, this is really good. I think I'm going to continue. The best thing to do is just start. Just start. Yeah, even if you might feel lost, just start. Because yeah. always, like, it's guaranteed you are going to find a way. Something yeah. is going to like, exactly. come out of that. Yeah. Like, you're going to have a path that's going to come out of you just starting, literally. Yeah. Like, the butterfly effect. Like, you just starting could lead to so, so much, much more, more. Right. That you don't even know, that you can't even understand or comprehend. Just yeah. start. You look back and you'll be like, when did I... What? Yeah, what? exactly. How? Yeah. And you're like there. Exactly. And you were here and you didn't even know. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's such great advice Mm because when we were doing this, we were like, okay, we're going to start in March. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, Mm -hmm. we actually had things planned so that we could start in March. Mm -hmm. And then when we started, we're like, okay, we can't go back now. Yeah. We started. (laughs) We can't go back. Mm -hmm. The only way we could move is forward. Yeah. And there's times when it's like, we're like today, for example, guys, if you don't know, today has been something very crazy. Um, Mm -hmm. We had so many, like, things that were going wrong. Mm. Imagine I woke up and the wine bottle for the flowers wasn't in my house. Oh, no. And I was so upset. <laughs> oh, no. I'm and so then, sorry. And then I got in the car and mm-hmm. my water poured all over my chair. What? I know. It's one of those days. It's one. It's been one of those days. Oh but lo God. and behold, it's like mm-hmm. the best podcast episode that I've ever filmed. <laughs> like, I'm telling you, like, just keep going. Yeah. Because something will come out of it. Yeah. And it's always the strongest people that god gives the toughest battle exactly yeah and also i don't technically know how to like word it properly Mm -hmm. but usually when when i'm doing something yeah and i feel a lot of pushback Mm -hmm. from life yeah from the universe yeah everything goes wrong or it's just a horrible day and i'm trying to do something yeah i don't know in the back of my mind i'm just like this is really good because wow yeah that's such a positive thing when yeah. you think about it no it's really good because the more pushback you get yeah. the bigger your reward will, will be. be yeah so you'll find the universe is pushing you whatever is pushing you like whatever forces are pushing at you yeah they're pushing you they're trying to get you down or yeah. it's trying to get you down either to see how much you want it so yeah. that you can get that revo- reward or to make sure you don't get to that point where you see the fruits of your labor and yeah. you understand like oh my god it was worth it yeah yeah so usually i just think like okay this is really good it's good that i'm having a bad day it means oh, yeah. that this is gonna work out yeah. well like, <laughs> yeah. like the, they test you all the time the universe yeah. tests you all the time yeah. and it's about how you react to that test yeah you could easily give up mm-hmm. and then look like if you put yourself here mm-hmm. And this is you and you're trying and you're trying and you're building and you're building and you're building. And yeah. on the opposite side, it's you and you stop. Mm-hmm. If you, you're, the one who stops, looks mm. at the one who didn't stop, mm. you'd be like, what? Mm-hmm. Because look exactly what happened was the the problems that I overcame, the yeah. issues that I went through, yeah. that I still in my mind, okay, yes, I might have been negative in my mind, but I kept pushing. Yes is the reason why I'm so much more fruitful uh-huh. and so much higher. I don't know why I use this analogy. Like, <laughs> I, didn't even, like, I didn't even think it through. Yeah, but yes, uh-huh. if you understand, you understand. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to put my point across. Then yeah. just don't give up. The mm-hmm. world will forever test you. Exactly. All the time. All the time. Then. Yeah. It's a sad reality. But mm-hmm. you know what? You, keep you pushing. gotta be strong. Yeah, exactly. You, you just keep pushing. Keep exactly. Pushing. There's a reason, like, there's a reason why not everybody is, like, successful or, like, yes. a millionaire. 
If it was easy, like everyone would be. Everyone would do it. Or everyone would be everyone rich would and do famous. Nothing. Yeah, exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. If it was easy, we, things wouldn't be the way they are right they now. They wouldn't. Yeah, it's always mm-hmm. that like one percent, that mm-hmm. like five percent. That's just like nah. I'm gonna keep on keep going, going, and I'm gonna keep on pushing. Oprah Winfrey was what twenty three and fired from her first like. Exactly. Oprah went through a lot. She went lot. through it. Yeah. You see the things that she went through. Look yeah. at her now. <laughs> right. Look at her now. She said, "You know what? That the world ain't gonna get me down. Mm-hmm. The job I was fired from ain't go- gonna get me down. Now she's the." billionaire mm-hmm. with, exactly in her dream and her passion exactly there's exactly. so many examples like that that mm-hmm. people don't even tyler perry tyler perry lived out of his car for yeah. the longest time i saw that yeah and it's so shocking because you never realize until you have a conversation with yeah. someone or somebody shows you yeah that's why this is so important because you have a conversation with someone mm-hmm. so you can see they are exactly like you just a exactly. normal human being exactly. going through life exactly it just might be a bit better because they decided that they were going to go for their passion yeah <laughs> and their dream and they said you know what the world ain't gonna hold me down yeah <laughs> so that's mm-hmm. why we have conversations like this and this is so nice yeah <laughs> it is it is it is so like, excited <laughs> i said if you guys see this anything. it's so it's so nice <laughs> thank you okay mm-hmm. so um you perform mm-hmm. quite often yeah. i mean i've seen you perform on television mm-hmm. and i've seen you perform in concerts yeah what is your routine let's okay i'm going to walk walk us through rogor's routine mm-hmm. the day of a performance oh my goodness the day yeah. of a performance is usually so freaking hectic yeah um like i told you i have anxiety yeah. usually there's there is a panic attack there somewhere <laughs> somewhere it comes yeah sometimes like my recent okay not one of my recent performances last year Mm -hmm. i had a performance and i was so nervous i had a nosebleed like right before i went on stage one of those yeah it was like a serious you know those like serious nosebleeds like it's not it does not stop it just keeps on coming out like a tap yeah i had just done my makeup as well full face oh my gosh (laughs) i was so worried oh my god i was in the bathroom just like what no the hell way. what the hell <laughs> <laughs> with blood everywhere i'm oh just like gosh. damn anyway i <laughs> <laughs> that's so crazy yeah and you anyway, i called i called my boyfriend i told him like <laughs> <laughs> that's the ones where you're wiping your nose it's not coming out i mean yeah, blood <laughs> yeah he comes and he just fights me with blood everywhere he's like what the hell? <laughs> like, I was like, I don't know. I think I panicked so much. I had a nosebleed. Yeah. Anyway, we like did like some cover up and everything. Told me, told me like go, just go, just go on stage. Just go. Don't even think about it. Just yeah. go. I went on stage. I performed, and it was the most amazing time ever. Wow. So I don't know. The day of a performance is just panic. Like I just panic a yeah. lot. Um, it's go go go. A lot of go go go, and again, yeah. things always go wrong. Yeah there's always something there's always something that will just go wrong Mm -hmm. so there's always that um obviously like um an outfit maybe that i wanted to wear gets ruined Mm. or isn't available and i decided that i wanted to pick it up that day yeah that stuff anyway (laughs) either way i make it and i perform yeah and it ends up being like the best time Ever. ever i even forget about like the nosebleed i had 30 minutes ago yeah, they're fully in <laughs> the, the happiness yeah. like mm-hmm. is that like okay in terms of do you practice in the morning mm-hmm. do you maybe do vocal exercises do you affirm manifest pray like mm. are there little things thank you rain we love <laughs> you things happen <laughs> shit happens yeah <laughs> <laughs> but is there like a routine specific like things like okay i wake up at 8 a.m mm-hmm. then i go to the gym I, <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> so first thing that came to yeah. my mind um then i go for practice and then mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Us- usually i don't have a specific time that i wake up like the day of a performance yeah but what what's guaranteed is that i'll go for practice especially yeah. if i'm performing with a band or an instrumentalist yeah We'll go for practice. We'll rehearse the whole set, like start to finish. Yeah. We'll go for sound check. We'll do the same thing. Do our um, checks, like you know, the mic, the mixer, yeah, the instruments. Mm-hmm. I'll find out like where we're gonna stand, how we're gonna do this, how we're gonna do the whole set. We do the whole set again. 
once we're done i'm done like yeah. I'm, I'm not gonna think about it until i perform yeah so that's it like in terms of vocal exercises i'll do them the days leading up the weeks no. the months leading up to um the performance yeah but the day of it's too hectic i don't i, I just do the rehearsal the run through mm-hmm. the sound check and that's it i'll go home i'll get ready or i'll go wherever i'm getting ready i'll get ready and then i'll come back and perform yeah oh wow Mm -hmm. (laughs) i feel like there's always like in everyone's mind there's so much intensity when it comes to performing of of course you see like big artists and they do their bts and it's like so much like so you i can understand how there's so much stuff that you need Mm -hmm. to do yeah um that you need to just chill exactly especially because i'm already panicking yeah, i do not want to start panicking. like once i do the final run through at the venue or wherever i'm doing the the show i don't i don't want to think about it there are already so many things stressing me out i yeah. just don't want to think about it i already know the songs that i'm going to be performing yeah i've already um rehearsed and everything that's that yeah i'm just gonna leave it like that yeah. and then continue and then, <laughs> and then you got it yeah you got it yeah um, it's always mm-hmm. also so shocking that I feel like we always assume that successful people have such a rigorous routine. Mm. Like, they wake up at, like, five. And I mean, Mm -hmm. I'm one who always thought that. And that's how I ended up doing the billionaire morning routine. Yes, I saw that. Girl, was it hell. I can imagine. Oh, my God. You were waking up at, like, five in the morning. And it was different for each person, for each billionaire. Yeah. That I was, was like, am I crazy? Yeah. I loved it because it was mm-hmm. a challenge and it mm-hmm. made me realize that I can do anything that I put my mind to. Yeah. It was beautiful in that sense, mm-hmm. but it was ridiculous uh-huh. because life isn't like that. Like, yeah. I know with you, Vinat, Guitari, like all you guests that I've talked to, mm-hmm. they don't have a strict time they wake up. It's about how their body yeah. moves into the day. Like, yeah. it's just about what they achieve during the day. Exactly. And... Huh, funny thing is, I mm-hmm. did that whole in that routine, uh-huh. and then I did for like three weeks to a month. Mm-hmm. I did my routine, uh-huh. waking up at six. Uh-huh. I don't do it no more. <laughs> like mm-hmm. that thing, it was difficult. Yeah, and now I just changed it up. Like mm-hmm. I just wake up at a reasonable time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, at a it must be different time. than waking up at like because the billionaires you would usually like when you'd usually do those videos sometimes you'd wake up at like four in the morning yeah five thirty in the morning ridiculous yeah like it's unrealistic do you have okay can i ask you yes you can which 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 was your favorite routine out of all of the the, the routines that you did i liked oprah's mm-hmm. and the reason why i liked oprah's is because she really incorporated incorporated nature mm. a lot mm-hmm. and spending time with her animals uh-huh. if you don't know me guys I love my cats uh-huh. hey cats I know you're never gonna watch this me or Nova <laughs> but you know what I love you so she had a lot of time that she spent with for example her animals and with nature mm. and when I did that routine I felt great Yeah, like it was such a good feeling I liked mm. Rihanna's cause mm-hmm. she prays oh, okay. like mm-hmm. and I didn't realize I've never always been like a spiritual person mm-hmm. Um, but I realized that with those two, their routines were not so rigorous as well. Mm-hmm. Um, they also, what was I saying? I'm not spiritual. That's where I was going with it. <laughs> I'm not, okay, I'm not that glorified. Like I go to church every Sunday, yeah. like and Wednesday yeah. and evening mass. No, no, yeah. no, no, no. For mm-hmm. me, it's a personal relationship with God. And I get um, that. Yeah. What I loved so much about their routines was just incorporating like nature god the animals Mm -hmm. some of them were unrealistic like the v billionaire morning routine the Uh one i woke up at four Uh by the time i was done with my routine Uh i was burnt out and i hadn't even started my day it must have been like 11 (laughs) a.m i was there like oh my gosh now what do i take a nap i've done 60 (laughs) things today already Uh i'm done like Uh i'm exhausted maybe that's the whole goal like for them like yeah to start so early you're done by like what midday yeah and then that's that but then what do you do the rest of the day everyone is working what are you doing they're rich (laughs) (laughs) they can do anything they want they want to fly to paris they want to fly to paris in a private jet yeah they're private (laughs) yachts out on the water yeah literally (laughs) but funny enough i found elon musk works more hours in a week than a normal like person like who works a nine-to-five job and you can honestly you can see that you can see like what's come out of that yeah he's rich he's 
rich, rich. He's rich and famous. And like, famous. <laughs> yeah. He's a billionaire. Yeah. Like. You can see, like, what that has brought. Though. Yeah. Yeah. I get but that. But I don't, mm-hmm. like, does he have a yeah. wife? I don't think he has a wife. He broke up mm. with his last, okay. Yeah, I don't even know. If he I does. bet he's not as happy. Uh, yeah, probably. And also, I feel like as we, as we, like, continue the way that we are continuing with yeah. our generation especially with gen yeah. z and like a i don't know a few millennials i don't know mm-hmm. anyway <laughs> <laughs> i think we i think we've started to realize that it's better to work smart than to work hard God. because a lot of people have gotten a lot of things done yeah in their own way mm-hmm. without you know doing a 9 to 5 or yeah. waking up at 4 in the morning or doing all of that stuff just like by understanding how to work smart yeah they could work and still be like the most calmest people. Yeah, they're not even stressed out. At all. Because they're just like meandering through their activities in a very, very intricate and smart way. Wait, yeah. I don't know. I feel like I feel like a lot of people are starting to understand that. I can't. I don't understand <laughs> it. I'm like that type of person who's like, okay, yeah, I can do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. I can do this. Yeah, oh, yeah. no. Okay, I can do this. <laughs> By the end of it, I'm... Yeah. Here, like, yeah. what the hell? I yeah. put too much pressure on myself. Mm-hmm. Um, I promise, and now I have to deliver. Yeah. But I don't. I don't think I've ever like really figured that out. Do mm. you know how to work smart rather than hard? Oh no, I don't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm. I'm not speaking from experience. <laughs> I've seen it though. Yeah. Good for you. Guys. Yeah. <laughs> well done. Yeah. No, for me, like, I, I, I still think the early bird catches the worm. Yeah. I'm trying to work smart, but I don't know. I guess it's just like a learning thing as well. Yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll yeah. be 20, mm. 23 and 22. Yeah. <laughs> you got one year longer than me to figure it yeah. out. <laughs> but um, mm-hmm. yeah, we'll figure it out, you know. Mm-hmm. It's, it's life. It's life. <laughs> it's life. It's life. <laughs> so <Just> funny. funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I love it. <laughs> okay back to reality guys (laughs) okay so i've seen a bit about keeping up with killing money Uh i want to know what this thing is like i want to know more about it can you Uh talk about your little thing that you have with your friends okay (laughs) (laughs) okay so keeping up with killing money is a reality show that i've started with lisa tomizuka Uh she is the brains behind the whole project because she realized that as a group of friends, we all come from like Kilimani. Yeah. There's just a few people that don't live in Kilimani, but they used to live in Kilimani. Yeah. So it's just like, oh, and we're always in Kilimani. If we're not at like her house, we're at my house. If we're not at my house, we're at somebody, someone, somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so she just decided. She was just like, why don't we just like document our time together because we're really interesting and we're yeah. kind of funny, mm-hmm. and we have a lot of drama yeah so it would be nice to just like document that for people to see yeah like a really nice reality tv show style yeah. and i feel like it would be so much better because like someone said that it's um it's low budget yeah it's not low budget it's no budget it's like yeah. no budget. no budget <laughs> <laughs> yeah and it's nice that it's so raw and authentic and authentic exactly oh, everything that. is just like there's nothing scripted like yeah we'll just be hanging out and then lisa will be like oh and then she'll just like record so and everyone will just talk like we'll have our drama but it's not scripted it's just like filmed with a with a phone camera it's real life baby. so real and i feel like i love that aspect yeah. so much because i feel like there's so many reality shows that are coming out that have these unrealistic expectations not not ex- expectation expectations unrealistic lives yeah um real housewives of nairobi a great show but like i can't relate and a lot of people can't yeah, relate I to can't. it yeah exactly no, can't. even keeping up with the kardashians like it's a great show but then at the same time like where can we find something that's relatable yeah and, and at the same time has people our age yeah. because even um young rich and african yeah amazing show as well yeah but they're not as young as we they're are. Not, like we look at them; not. these people have kids and everything. Literally. Like, <laughs> like married, exact- divorced. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So it's really nice, like if we could create something that 
people our age can relate to mm-hmm. and can understand because they're our age and they go through the things that we go through and yeah. they understand us and on top of that it being so raw and yeah. so real yeah. the editing like we do it ourselves and everything yeah. it's just so funny yeah. but I love that I so love, much I love how you speak about it so passionately she's like yeah. smiling from ear to ear and I'm just like I love that yeah. funnily enough me and my parents me and my friends always used to sit down and we're like honestly mm-hmm. we could have had a reality tv show yeah. because life <laughs> mm-hmm. for us is uh-huh. so interesting exactly and we're young mm-hmm. and this is everything that everybody is going through at exactly. our age exactly so big ups to you guys we're yeah. keeping up with kilimani lisa yeah. yes, <laughs> shout out <girl>. to tommy <laughs> And so weird calling her Tommy though. <laughs> Lisa. <laughs> and congratulations for that. I'm 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 a watch. I'm a be a fan. Thank a follow. You. I'm ready to see it. Thank and you. relate. Yeah. So congratulations. Thank and keep you doing so much. what you guys are doing. Thank like, you. Thank you. We appreciate it. Mm-hmm. We Thank need that representation. Yeah. <laughs> Power to the people. Power to the people. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So now we're on to our quick fire questions. We have five questions. You have five seconds to answer it. Okay. One word to a sentence. Uh-huh. First thing that comes to your mind so we can pick your brain a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I love that's the reaction all our guests have. <laughs> but it's fun. <laughs> you gonna be good. <laughs> okay. So the first question is, what does success mean to you? Five seconds. Damn. Okay. Yeah. Um... Success means being comfortable. Yeah. Success means being content. Yeah. And having progress. Yeah. Being stable. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! That was quick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next one. Best advice you've ever been given? Best advice that I've ever been given is just that life goes on without you, with or without you. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I can think about right now. Life goes on with or without you. Yeah. Just keep on going. Yeah. That was from my doctor after I broke my leg. <laughs> <laughs> that is so crazy. <laughs> Great doctor. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now what's the worst advice you've ever been given? Uh, worst advice is... I don't. I can't think of any worst advice I've ever been given because I don't, I don't hold on to that stuff. Wow. <laughs> No, that's good. <laughs> that's some advice you should listen to. <laughs> Don't hold on to the negative yeah. or bad advice. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. What three words come to your mind when you hear the word music? Love, mm-hmm. passion, freedom. Ooh. Love, passion, freedom. That should be on like a t shirt. <laughs> like, <laughs> like live, love, laugh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Last one. Last one. If you could change something about Kenya that could help young people succeed, develop, change, thrive, strive, what would it be? Just one thing. One thing? Yes. Probably greed because I feel like greed is the root cause of a lot of our issues. If you look at the state of our economy right now, Mm -hmm. if we had a thriving economy, it would be so perfect for um, young people coming up to get the things that they need to, Mm -hmm. um, resources, um, what's it, mentors, mm-hmm. pave ways, infrastructure to do the things that they need to do, whether it's um, engineering or music or um, mathematics or whatever. Yeah. If we had the adequate infrastructure, which isn't there because of greed mm-hmm. in certain parts of the government, mm-hmm. we'd be so far, especially like us young people. Mm-hmm. It would be really nice. It would be insane. But yeah, greed, definitely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like that. That is right. Greed is the root of all evil. Mm-hmm. Is that what they say? Money. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I said the wrong word. I've made it greed. Guys. Yeah, <laughs> it is greed it's actually. Greed. Greed is caused by wrong. money. Yeah, money. It's not even. It's greed for money. So it's yeah. greed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> Make your own quotes. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we've come to the end of the episode. Before we leave, or before you leave, we always like to give our guests some time to shout themselves out, shout out people who they want to shout out. Just say a few last words for our grinders. <laughs> Not grinders, grinders, because <laughs> grinders going to 
Yeah. <laughs> so, um, just something that you want to say to our people who are watching and are going to be inspired by you. Uh, it's <laughs> a lot of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of like rallying the people, like yeah. <laughs> violence always. <laughs> um, um, I'd like to say I love each and every one of you. If you listen to my music or if you've interacted with any of my content or anything that I've put out, I love you so much. Even if you haven't, I love you still. At least mm-hmm. you know that there's somebody out there that loves you. Um, keep doing what you're doing. Keep following what you love. Yes. And make sure that you make the most out of life. Because at the end of the day, life is very short. It's very, um, what's the word? It's, it's, it's very unpredictable. Mm-hmm. So I feel like you should just follow what you want to do, what you love, what you feel is your passion, what you feel is your calling. Yes. Um, yeah, it's going to work out eventually. And I'd like to shout out myself. You can follow mm-hmm. me on Rogoro Tanya. <laughs> Rogorotanya on all platforms. Um, uh, there's a new series that I'm starting with um, Nick Agassa called Palm Sessions. You could also follow that too. It's really nice. I'd like to shout out my friends, Lisa Tomizuka, for being here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'd like to shout out my family, my mom, my dad, and my brother, even though you're probably cringing right now. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to you um my boyfriend my friends mukami <laughs> i love you so much <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay mm-hmm. so thank you thank you so much for mm-hmm. coming on the podcast for giving us time to pick your brain a bit and hear about you and who you are mm-hmm. and your journey we are rooting for you girl Keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> we can see it, and it will always, we will always be there for you. Thank and routine. you. We can't wait to have you in episode two of yeah. Rogoro's episode. You Thank know? you. As we can get through everything, but that's because we're having so much fun. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so thank you, thank you so much. Thank and you. Thank we you. love and appreciate you so much here on the Grand Podcast for thank coming you so on. Much. Thank you for having me. Of course. Thank you. This has been so amazing. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. I can't wait to see the episode. <laughs> Guys, stay great. tuned. Yeah, stay tuned for this episode and every other episode that comes after this. You heard that. <laughs> you heard that. <laughs> Before you go, mm-hmm. we want to know if there's anybody that you would love to see as a guest on the podcast. You could shout them out mm-hmm. or just let us know. Okay. Um, okay. Can I shout out like three people yes <laughs> okay the first person that i'd really love to see here is kanzu he's yeah. re- he has like you should pick his brain yeah. he, he says the most amazing things mm-hmm. and he has a very interesting outlook on life which okay. i feel like you'd really enjoy listening to okay. <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. um another person that i would feel should be here is tomizuka lisa right there also yeah. an amazing person great outlook on life amazing thoughts amazing vibes yes and the third person that I would really want you to have here is <laughs> probably Nick Agassa, by the way. He's also yeah. an amazing artist. He's an instrumentalist. Okay, can I add one more person yes, as well? Yes, you can. <laughs> okay. yeah. Anola. She is a saxophonist and a, a vocalist and a writer and oh. all-rounded. Amazing. Okay. Anola as well. Yeah. All mm-hmm. right, mm-hmm. they're on the list. <laughs> on the list. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's it from us today, guys. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Before we leave, you know we always do a little takeaway for you guys. And for this episode, your takeaway is: What are your non-negotiables? What is that thing that you will not at all give up? When it comes to running your business, when it comes to being a CEO, when it even comes to working a nine to five, what are things that you will a hundred percent not be doing no matter what? Thank you guys for watching this episode. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you were inspired by our lovely guest, Rogoro. She'll be back soon. So make sure to keep up with us on our social medias. Make sure to follow Cryptic Media Studios and subscribe and comment and like as well as the Grind Podcast, YouTube and Instagram and TikTok. We'll see you next week. Bye, our grinders. Bye.
I think that was so good. Mm-hmm. You know, I just do like three times.